Hello, my name is Wim Van Roy and I'm an Educational Architect and Solutions Engineer at Lowell. And in this video we're going to show you how to transport and process Ultra HD signals within the V-Matrix system. Standard definition was used until the end of the 20th century. Next to that, HD formats started to become more common and bringing up to 5 times more pixels to each single displayed picture. We have seen 1080i and 720p formats and later more the 1080p formats became the reference for video transmission. About 10 years after the huge adoption of HD television, the media industry kicked off a new revolution with the introduction of 4K resolution. The term 4K comes to the amount of pixels per video line, depending on the exact resolution. This can be 3840 or 4096. These formats are also referenced as 2160p, referring to the quality of the video lines per frame. A 4K picture contains 4 times more pixels than an HD one, and hands up to 20 times more pixels than a standard definition picture. Only increasing the picture's resolution would not be enough, and additional requirements to keep a pleasing viewer experience is needed. While the human eye was satisfied with standard definition pictures moving at a frequency around 25 or 30 Hz, it started to show artifacts when HD pictures are moving at that frame rate, and the experience even becomes uncomfortable with 4K content. The industry quickly ratified 50 and 60 Hz as the recommend frame rates for 4K moving pictures. For sure this quality increase has a price, while carrying an uncompressed SD video signal requested a bandwidth of 270 megabits per pixel, a 4K feed running at 60 frames per second now requires 12 gig, making the interface speed increased by a factor of 44.4. On the other hand, while a color depth of 8-bit was sufficient for a satisfying experience in SD and even in HD formats, we would agree that at least 10 bits of depth are necessary in 4K. And even that high dynamic range pictures in 12-bit should be the natural evolution for those formats. The C100 supports 3840 by 2160 Ultra HD broadcast formats in 2SI or 12G. There actually exist two families of 4K formats. You have Ultra HD TV1 or simply Ultra HD, which is 3840 by 2160 pixels. And it is the 4K resolution issued from the broadcast television world. It corresponds to four times the resolution of an HD picture, 1920-1080. Ultra HD format is defined by SMPTE 2036-1 standard. Ultra HD formats are generally associated to broadcast frame rates, 25, 29, 97, 30, 50, 59, 94 and 60 frames per second, but also exist in a digital cinema frame rate. It is equal to 4 times the resolution of a 2K picture, 2048 by 1080. 4K DCI image format is defined by SMPTE 2048-1. 4K DCI formats are generally associated to cinema frame rates like 2398, 24, 47, 95 and 48 frames, but also exist in broadcast frame rates. The broadcast industry prematurely moved to 4K before the standardization body defined how to carry such a content. The first adopted transport method was naturally to split the 4K picture into 4 HD quadrants, like you can see in this example, and to carry them on 4 synchronized SD signals, 4 times HD SDI for 4K at up to 30 frames per second, then 4 times 3G SDI for 4K at up to 50 frames per second. Later on, SMPTE introduced the 425-3 and 425-5 standards. They define a new method for mapping the 4K pictures onto 4 HD sub-images on two sample interleaf division rule, so that each of the four substream carries one quarter resolution picture. These new standards still use 4 HD SDI signals to carry on 4K at up to 30 frames per second, 
or four 3G SDI signals to carry on 4K at up to 60 frames per second. Legacy first generation equipment would be rather 4K square division quad split and has half a frame of delay versus more modern two sample interleaf at one line of latency. The inconvenience of square division is that if one link is missing, then it makes a quarter of the picture black. It also requests a lot of memory to store at least two of the four links to display the picture correctly. It also requests the perfect timing to align the images. Nevertheless, it is much simpler to put in place. Square division is used in post-production and in small systems. The advantage of the 2SI is that a loss of one of the cables is not blanking a quarter of the image. It just results in a loss of resolution. Also note that the Link 1 only is a kind of down conversion from 4K to HDP, but as you lose luminance, it's not usable as a down converted source. The data multiplex is very complex, but it needs a simpler memory configuration and it gives a less processing delay. 2SI is used for encoding and transmission applications. With the evolution of serial digital interface speeds, these quad link mappings can now be replaced by dual link. 6G SDI equivalent, or even one single 12G SDI connection. To achieve that, the SMPTE recently released uh, ST2081 standards for 6G SDI carriage and ST2082 standards for 12G SDI transport. The V matrix system does not support 6G. Let's have a look at some 12G best practice examples. We have two cameras with 4K 12G that have been converted and transmitted by the C100. The 12G is going via the internal AV crossbar to the 2110-20 and 30TX. The receiver will send IGMP join to the switch and the switch will forward the stream from the TX to the RX. The RX will receive the 20 for video and the 30 for audio. Via the internal AV crossbar, we have a 12G signal that we can send to the EVS server. In this second example, we have the same setup, but the C100RX will request a second 12G stream from camera 2 and switch on the receiver when make before break is selected. As the current C100 supports 3x12G with 40G connection, it might be a better approach to do clean switching on the internal crossbar. Keep this in mind when you are designing the workflow. This would allow us to have up to 3x12G source on one C100 and switch between them when the streams are active. And in this example we added an EVS server to the source C100 where the internal crossbar could send 12G signal to a splitter for a local attached destination in 4K 12G. The EVS has a 12G SDI out that we connect to the C100 and the C100 will convert this to the network layer, put it onto the switch and then on the other side we can take it out from the network again, convert it back to 12G and get it back to the EVS. In this example we have two cameras with 4K 4x3G that has been converted to 12G by the C100. The 12G out from the merger is going via the internal AV crossbar to the 2110-20 and 2110-30TX. The receiver will send an IGMP join to the switch and the switch will forward the stream from the TX to the RX. The RX will receive the dash 20 for video and the dash 30 for audio. Via the internal AV crossbar we have a 12G signal that we gearbox via the splitter to 4x3G for the EVS server. On the first SDI we will insert the SMPTE payload ID for 2SI audio and we can carry up to 32 channels. When we would request the second camera, the switch will drop the package from the first camera and pass through the second 12G stream signal. In the second example we have the same setup but the C100RX will request a second 12G stream from camera 2 and switch on the receiver when make before break has been selected. The current C100 supports up to 3x12G on a 40G connection and it might be a better approach to do clean switching on the internal crossbar. Keep this in mind when you are designing the workflow. 
This would allow us to have up to 3x12G sources on one C100 and switch between them when the streams are active. In the next example we added an EVS server to the source C100 where there is an internal crossbar that could send a 12G signal to a splitter for a local attached destination on the 4K 2SI. Let's have a look at more vertical presentation. So the CCU has 4 time BNC 3G connected to the C100. We use a merger to get a 12G signal to be sent to the network layer. In this case of the EVS we show a program out from the EVS to be converted to 12G TX and receive the 12G on the RX side of the C100 to split them again to 4 times 3G on the recording to the EVS. Note that the first link is always used for the audio and up to 32 channels. This link also has the SMPT payload ID for 2SI. The same kind of procedure is also possible for the external signals of an OB-VAN. The C100 card will merge the 4K 2SI signals to 12G and on the other side it will use a splitter to get back the 12G out as 4 times 3G 2SI. Of course, when the source and destination support single raster 2110-20-2160p, no gearboxing is needed and we can move the signals natively over the switch. Let's have a look at the practical side of the C100. On the current SDI backplanes we support 3G on all connectors. Above example is for 10 in, 10 out. When using the merger it is extremely important to keep the signals in order. You also need to add the second 4K 2SI signal to the top level of the connectors. We could convert 2 times 4K 2SI on this card and receive it on a second C100 as 2 times 12G, like in this example. In the second example we use the same source setup but we will use a 12G splitter on the receiver side to create 2 times 4K 2SI. Make sure to keep the links correctly connected. When we would use a 12G setup we could go for 3 times 12 GSDI to IP conversion per card. The first card has 3 times 12 GSDI and we transmit this to a second C100 card to connect the 12 G SDI device. In the next example we have 2 times 12 G source and 2 times 4K 2 SI as output on the second card. For sure we could add a third 12G for the first C100 card, but we would need a third C100 card to receive the signal and gearbox it to a 4K 2SI signal. Let's have a look at the maximum amount of 4 times 3G 2SI on a C100 system. When we use 12G as source or destination, the maximum is currently 3 signals for a 40G connection in each direction. The 10 plus 10 module has a maximum of 2 in, 2 out. The 2 plus 18 has 0 in and maximum 4 out. The 18 plus 2 has maximum 4 in and 0 out. The 2 plus 2 plus 16 module has 5 possible options, 4 in plus 1 out, but you will only be able to transmit 3 12G signals at once. Then we have a 3 in, 2 out, a 2 in, 3 out, a 1 in, plus 3 out and we have a 0 in plus 4 out and in this case you are limited to maximum 3 times RX at the same time. Two outputs would have the same RX signal. So on the current SDI backplanes we support 3G on all connectors. Above example is for a 10 in and 10 out. When using the merger it is extremely important to keep the signals in order. You also need to add the second 4K 2 SDI to the top level of the connectors. So this is where we would connect the first and then that is where we would connect the second. In the C100 software we would go to the merger and activate the first and the second merger if you want to create a second 12G stream. The merger will be active once you select the substream 2SI to be true. It shows you what inputs to connect to get them to the merger. The merger does only accept direct inputs from the SDI module. Crossbar outputs cannot be used as inputs to the merger. 
When you activate the merger, the two SI inputs are not available anymore for the crossbar or other functions. They are automatically linked to the merger. Next step would be to check the signal in the output of the merger to see if it is creating a nice HD 2160p50 or 5994 or P60. Keep in mind that it needs to be a signal that is compatible with the C100. Make sure that the video transmitter has no constraints activated that limit the use of the Merge 12G signal. Activate the reserve Ultra HD resources as you are going to transmit a 12G signal. Set up a video transmitter and audio transmitter as usual. Link the Merger 0 as the source to the first TX and then Merger 1 to the second TX. Check the standard of the TX and set the TX as active. From now on you are transmitting the 12G signal. Let's have a deeper look on the RX side and check the video specific parts. So the support of ST2042 is used for receiving VC2 compressed streams and is not needed by default to make the 2SI streams work. Supports of Ultra HD 2110 single links allows you to receive a 12G single link stream. This has to be active, otherwise we cannot receive our 12G signal. Supports of Ultra HD sample interleaved is used to decode a grouped SDP of 4x3G 2SDI streams to a merged 12G 4K signal on the receiver output. It is however highly recommended to use a 12G signal link stream instead. So it is not needed to activate the support Ultra HD sample interleave. Create video receiver, set the details and then create the next one to not get blocked. Please make sure you set up the support settings for each RX when you are creating them. You can't easily activate the settings afterwards and need to delete the video receiver and reassign them to the session. Create a video receiver, set the details and then create the next one to not get blocked. If you notice that the operation get false, try to delete the receiver and recreate one by one. Reassign them to the session. Of course, if you're using a script, you won't see this problem. Now paste the SDP in the RX and make it active. Check the transmitter stats on the landing page to see your stream being transmitted. Keep in mind that only the bottom row of the C100 BNC back panel is 12G capable. Let's now have a look on the details of the configuration of the second receiver C100 with the 12G splitter. So we can have up to two receivers and connect them, first one on the bottom and the second one on top. Create the splitter on the receiving C100 by pressing the plus button. As we have 2 times 12 g SDI, we would create 2. Select the splitter from the drop-down and link the 12G video receiver or crossbar as the source. Check the status of the splitter to be active. The standard is set to HD 1080p 50 when the source is 12G 50p. You will get 4 outputs, one for each quad 2SI link, as you can see in this example. Link the 4 splitter outputs to the 4 SDI outs. If you would need for any reason the 2SI signal available on the crossbar, you could use the merger output as an input to a splitter to recreate the 2SI 4K signal in the C100 locally. Thanks for being with us today, come back next week at the same time for another episode of our products how to's. Welcome to Lavo Lounge, Lavo's weekly live program bringing you product tips, application insights, new product introductions, customer interviews, interactive Q&As and more. Don't miss out this unique opportunity to stay connected.